Okay, by my clock, I've got 12.03, so let's get started. Um, thank you very much for uh, coming today and, and listening in on this information session for our Masters of Management in Artificial Intelligence at Smith School of Business. So my name is Dean McEwen, and I'm uh, looking after the recruitment for the MMAI program right now. And um, so, you know, hopefully, uh, this session will answer a lot of your questions. Um, just as a bit of housekeeping, uh, I've got my colleagues, Alex and Jen here as well, who are going to be answering questions as we go through the session. So please feel free to ask them, use the Q&A um, feature here in Zoom, and uh, they'll answer those questions. They will be saving probably a couple for at the end that I can address sort of openly for everybody. Um, so if your question doesn't get answered right away, um, please be patient, and uh, I'll probably take care of it later on. Um, so again, this is for the Masters of Management in Artificial Intelligence at Smith School of Business, and my name is Dean McEwen. So, okay, so one thing we always do here at Smith is uh, do a land acknowledgement. So, so to begin, I would like to acknowledge that Queen's University is situated on the traditional Huron, Wendat, and Petun First Nations, the Seneca, the Mississaugas of the Credit River, the Anishinaabe, and the Haudenosaunee territories. And we are very grateful to be able to live, learn, and play on these lands as uninvited guests upon these traditional territories. And as you can see from this map, when you think about Kingston to the east and Toronto to the west, um, Queen's University and our classes um, cover a lot of territory and uh, a lot of different uh, Indigenous groups as well. Okay, so first off, one thing I've always, I've actually kind of started doing recently is just to make sure that people are aware of the different programs that we offer here at Smith, because uh, this one here, this webinar is about artificial intelligence, but we also have an analytics program, we have an MFIT program for financial technology, and we have a newly launched Masters of Digital Product Management. Each of these programs does touch on artificial intelligence. It just looks at it from a different perspective. And so depending on what your personal interests are and your future career goals, uh, you know, this may not be the right program for you, but I just want to let you know that we do have other options out there as well. And so if you are interested in something else or just to, you know, kick the tires and see what it's all about, um, feel free to uh, reach out to our recruitment team and they can help fill in some of those uh, blanks. Okay, so first and foremost, um, this is the, uh, what I would call, it's a full master's degree that you can get in 12 months. Um, but this is not something you can just pay your money and get your uh, paper at the end of it. Uh, there's a lot of academic rigor in this master's degree. And so we do actually have exams. We have lots of assignments. There's team projects and presentations as well. Um, so while you're in this program, there is a lot of work to do, but you're going to be learning a lot and you're going to be set up very well to launch your career, especially in the AI space, um, you know, being able to figure this stuff out. And uh, it is also, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, but it's also a team-based program. So you're going to really understand how to work with people because as we all know, um, AI and technology is great, but if you can't relate or convince or persuade people, uh, and work with people, um, your AI ideas are not really going to go too far, right? So you really got to be able to figure that out. All right, now this is something I, I literally just threw in this slide deck this morning because I read this report by uh, Boston. Um, and they just did a survey. It just got released, uh, I think, like this week or last week called AI at Work and what people are saying. And this is the executive summary. So I thought I'd just include that in there. But um, what it does is it really confirms, you know, even though ChatGBT came out right in November, December, and there was like a ton of buzz about that and about, oh my gosh, what's the future of AI and all that sort of thing. Um, but this buzz still exists today, right? And so even though it was really hot a couple of months ago, it is still very hot, but it's actually even more interesting right now because now people are starting to think about how they can actually use AI at their workplace and how they can change the organization. But the interesting part and what the survey discovered, and this is why I think it's so interesting, is that this buzz is really equally divided between optimism and concern, okay? So that's why it's, you know, it's very relevant to what we're talking about today in this program, because what we've discovered through the survey is that leaders are very excited about the possibilities of AI, 
while workers tend to be worried about their jobs and the negative impacts of AI and not understanding how their organizations are going to leverage AI and are they going to protect the workers and that sort of thing. Um, but what uh, it also helps to identify is that workers need to understand artificial intelligence and how it can help their roles. We know that AI is not going to replace people, but it's rather going to augment their abilities to make them smarter, faster, and more accurate in their decision making. And this really is a tremendous opportunity because we now see it that we put people who know about AI and understand it and understand how it works and how it will support the organization are going to be in very powerful positions to lead their companies through the transformation and successfully manage the change that is inevitable. Okay, and even these statistics here, right, we can see now that leaders want AI in the workplace. We also see that managers are struggling to deal with AI and trying to figure this out and that employees are extremely worried. So this is where, this is what, you know, I see this sort of change and disruption as opportunity. And I would say that you've probably identified that opportunity as well, or you wouldn't have signed up for this webinar to help understand. And so we know, right, that people who understand the technology and figure out how to apply it into their workplace, they're the ones who are gonna be thriving and they're the ones gonna be moving into that leadership position going forward. So it's really important that you're here today to learn about AI and to be able to push this stuff forward. All right, so let's talk about the program and what we're gonna be looking at. So um, I always include this screen here because this is really the foundational piece for having to build success. It also relates to those different programs that we offer here at Smith. And this is, uh, you know, this pyramid has a foundational piece that is super, super important, right? So we need to have the verified and trusted data. And this is where our colleagues who take the analytics program are gonna come into play because they're gonna be able to look at the data, they're gonna be able to clean the data, they're gonna be able to set it up. And then they're gonna start thinking about those different types of analytics, right? The progressive analytics, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second. And then ultimately where we want to get is the artificial intelligence automated decision making at the top, right? And that's what is going to make that big difference. That is what's going to make the transformation in our organizations. Um, but again, none of that's going to work if we don't have that foundational piece of the verified and trusted data and those different types of progressive analytics. And then what is that? So just so you know, right? We have descriptive analytics, which is what happened, right? How many widgets did we produce this month? And then people are never happy with what happened. People always want to know what will happen, right? And that's where you get into predictive analytics. And this is where you get into things like forecasting, time series analysis, and that kind of thing. And these are all important technologies to be used in artificial intelligence as well. Because again, it's about automated decision making. We want to know what's coming down the pipe. And of course, we're never happy with what will happen. And you never know what's going to happen with your model because something like a pandemic can come along and mess everything up for you, right? So everybody's models, everybody's data uh, is kind of erroneous these days. And so everyone has to be built up. So what we want to do is move into this prescriptive analytics, right? And how to make it happen. And this is where certain AI technologies can come into play as well, right? Because not only can you map out um, the predictive part and the predictive modeling part of data, but you can start thinking about how do I make this happen? How, what can I do today to make sure that I get the outcome that I want later on in the analytics space? And then ultimately you're gonna need to have that kind of what I would call creativity and knowledge and the ability to understand the impact of your decisions today and the future. And that's extremely important when you get into cognitive analytics or the self-learning and automated artificial intelligence that we're going to be looking at in this program. And then what is AI? So this is the stuff we're going to be covering in the program. Artificial intelligence itself is a very broad concept where you know machines think and act like humans. Um, but we all know that that is almost too broad, right? There's a whole bunch of other 
areas in artificial intelligence we're going to be looking at that we have some specific courses to look at those different technologies and then all of a sudden you get these sort of like a new combination of existing technologies and things like generative ai and large language models and stuff that we're going to be looking at in the program as well and so we want to understand machine learning we want to understand deep learning and how to speed things up and think like a human being and these are all important aspects that are that you need to understand as we go forward because this technology is here it's here to stay we just got to figure out how to use it and how to use it effectively and then again when you look at the content and the curriculum of this program right you really do have to have a deep understanding of machine learning you have to understand the math behind each algorithm so we have an actual specific course in ai and mathematics and that's going to help you understand that so it's really important that you know, if you want to be successful in this program, you need to be comfortable with quantitative analysis, mathematics and statistics, um, because we need to be able to look at, you know, the different types of data and the data sets, what's one's going to work best with what technology we're going to implement or what kind of algorithms we're going to use. We have to be able to understand and interpret the results that we're seeing, see if we have to adjust the model or look at different data. We have to, you know, evaluate whether the model actually works for the future. And this is what I was talking about, you know, prescriptive analytics. We're thinking about, okay, what's coming next? What's coming down the pipe? What kind of future data do we need? And will this model today fit that data? And how do I select which features should be included in my model, right? Sometimes simpler is better, it usually is simpler is better because it makes much more efficiency and it has the understanding the decisions that you expect it to make, right? And that's how you're going to be able to get it. You're going to be able to build the model. You can test the model, you evaluate the model, and then you implement the model. Now, back to the program. So one of the what I would say is kind of weird, right? This is an artificial intelligence program, but it's offered by a business school. OK, so when we look at the technology and artificial intelligence, we look at it from a very different perspective. We look at it from the, the perspective of a business itself, right? This is about decision making. This is about leveraging technology to make the best and most efficient decisions that we can possibly make. And so it's always best to start with what is the problem that the business is faced with and what are we trying to solve? And that broader approach, right, helps us to put things into context to understand, okay, is speed really important or is accuracy more important, right? Do we wanna use a neural network or we do wanna use a supervised machine learning system? And so that gives us this sort of broader approach to solving these problems using AI and data analysis, right? Very important. And then the last part is this developing business leaders through experience and team coaching. This gets back to my earlier comment about people, right? You can't do anything without people and support of people. You've always got to be able to figure out how to tell the proper story, how to get the resources, how to build the team, how to make the team work properly. And so those are things that we're going to be looking at in this program as well, because this is a team-based program. Now, here's the courses that we're going to be looking at, and we've got basically four types of courses, right? We've got what we call method courses where we teach you how to do artificial intelligence. This is the important part, the foundational knowledge pieces that you have to figure out before you can even start thinking about anything else as well. So we've got, you know, the method courses include mathematics for AI, machine learning and AI technology, AI innovation and entrepreneurship. We have the AI technical courses. So it's like a deeper dive into deep learning, natural language processing, reinforcement learning, and machine learning. And then we have application courses. So how do you do AI in finance? How do you do AI in marketing? And we have a capstone project in this program as well that's gonna help you actually use the skills and the knowledge you've learned in the program for an actual project you want to take it almost to operationalization um, towards the end and make sure that you know it fits and meets the, the technical requirements and again testing your models to make sure they're actually working and then again back to our business school roots we have what we call power skill courses so we have, you know, introduction to management. A lot of people haven't taken management courses before in this program. So it's important to get that introduction, understand how to use case studies, how do you develop your storytelling skills, and how do you, again, work with people. 
We have agile project management for AI. So AI projects, they're a little bit different than traditional technology projects. And so we want to have sort of an AI, a agile project management system in there. So there's a course there. We have AI ethics and policy. Um, one of the things you'll see in that BCG survey, um, we're going to send you a link to that actually following this, um, this webinar as well. Um, but you'll see in there that it's of top concern. AI and ethics and the, the ethical decision making is very important to organizations, to leaders, and to workers. And so we have a whole course in AI ethics and policy. And then we have a leading change course, which again is about strategy development and change management. So again, working with people. Yes, you're focused on the technology, but you've got to work and influence and persuade people to be able to do that. So we've got a full course in that. Now, the delivery of this course, it is in person and it is in Toronto. Okay, so this is something that uh, um, it's the only format we've got for this program right now. So you do have to be living in close proximity to Toronto and the GTA to be able to take the course successfully. Um, the program itself starts in September. Uh, it is one night every week and then one weekend day bi-weekly for 12 months. So right now it's Tuesday nights and then every other Saturday for a full day. Uh, we have a classroom facility in downtown Toronto. It's at Simcoe Place, which is right across the road from the Metro Trauma Convention Center on Front Street West. Um, so it's very handy to get to. It's right off the subway line. The GO station is there, all that kind of stuff. And if a lot of you are back to work and back to the office downtown Toronto, um, it's a really quick walk you know, from Bay Street and Adelaide, that sort of thing. Um, we do do an opening session in Kingston, so you will be expected to travel um, to Kingston for that one week. Um, this year, September 5th is when it starts. We're here for a full seven days, and you're going to be taking courses during that time, plus you get introduced to high-performing teams, plus you get introduced to the first course as well in the program. And so, um, you know, that is something we want you to be immersed like a student, okay? We want you to come here. We want you to not have to worry about your, your family and home duties. There's no garbage to take out. Um, there's no grocery shopping to do. Uh, we're gonna feed you and put you up in a hotel and stuff. And we want you to be focused completely on being a student and working with your new team because that's gonna be integral to your success as you go forward. So that is a requirement. You do have to come here. And then we have a second week, um, probably about eight months into the program, we call it Innovation Week. And it's when we take our entrepreneurship and innovation course, same deal, come to Kingston. Um, you're sort of put up in a hotel with food, and your teams are here and you're taking this course together and it's just an opportunity again to sort of you know leave work leave home behind and become a student a full-time student for a week and throughout the program you've got ongoing coaching so we've got both high performing team coaches and we've got career coaches as well and so all that coaching is available to you and i certainly recommend that you take and use it to your fullest advantage um, and then throughout the program as well, we have career support, which I'll talk about in another slide. Okay, even, even though we're a business school, we do have a lot of technology involved with this. So um, these are a few of the tools that we use in this program, including Databricks and Snowflake. Um, you can definitely expect to do a lot of uh, Python programming in the program, SQL programming as well. Uh, we use Microsoft Azure as our uh, cloud-based processing and stuff. Uh, and then we have academic licensing for things like Tableau and SAS via, um, if that is of interest to you. Again, we, are, we try to be tool agnostic in the program so that whatever tools you're used to using at the workplace, you should be able to use in the program to do the same kind of stuff. So we don't want to push anything on anybody through that way. Now, who's teaching you? Okay, so we've got, uh, in this program specifically, we have a combination of faculty from Smith School of Business. So these are full-time tenure track faculty member. Um, three here, we have Elspeth, Stephen, and Tina are examples of that. But we've also, because AI changes so frequently, what we've done for those highly technical courses, um, except for machine learning, that's taught by Steve Thomas, 
Um, but what we've done is we've gone out to other resources and brought these people in. And these people, they live and breathe what they're teaching. So, for example, our deep learning course is taught by Ofer Shea. Ofer used to work for um, Deloitte Omnia um, for a long time, but now he actually runs his own startup. And what does he do? He does deep learning, and that's what he's going to be teaching you. So it's really important for us to make sure that you know the latest and greatest. And so bringing in Ofer to teach that is by far the best way to get the best and the most recent information in the program. And so he is an adjunct faculty member. Uh, the same thing goes for our reinforcement learning course. We bring in Sydney Cavinci from uh, the Queen's School of Computing. And so again, Sydney, he lives and breathes reinforcement learning. That is his research area. That is, he's very, very technical in that. And so again, he's bringing the latest and the greatest into this course for you to learn what's happening today, because there's no point in this AI world that you're learning something that was even six months old, right? You gotta be able to learn what's going on this very day. So that's really important. So it's nice because you get this nice blend of different faculty, different information sources, but everybody's geared towards this whole idea of using AI for business and in management experience. And then this whole thing wouldn't be possible without guidance from our advisory board. And so we've got uh, a tremendous group of industry leaders um, who look after uh, basically our curriculum and kind of watching over our shoulders, making sure that we're doing the right thing, but most importantly, making sure that you're receiving the knowledge that you need to be successful for careers in places like the Disney company and um, the growth analytics and Bank of Montreal, and including all the other big banks and stuff in Canada as well, and many different startups, a lot of startups, a lot of consulting firms, everybody's doing AI stuff now. So it's really important that you have these fundamental knowledge pieces when you're looking for and developing your career. Um, and just as a quick aside, uh, Mark Schaefer from Disney, he was the chair of the board. Um, he has now done his term as of last month. And then Lori Beta from Bank of Montreal, she's taken over the chair um, of the advisory board. So we're really uh, looking forward to Lori's leadership in that area. She's been around since the beginning of our, our advisory board. And so she comes with a tremendous wealth of knowledge. Now, as a student, what do you get? What do you see? What do you do, right? So um, we have a number of professional workshops offered throughout the program. Again, these are things that you can choose to attend if you want. Um, and nowadays in this new uh, sort of remote world we've got, we can record most of our workshops, discussions, guest panels and things. So you can always see them later. You can attend them live. Um, but there's a number of professional workshops you can participate in. There's a lot of clubs. We have student leadership opportunities. Every cohort has its own student sort of government or leadership group. And so if you want to put that on your resume, it's a good thing to have. Um, you can run for these positions and uh, really take a leadership role with the cohort. Um, we have an alumni a club as well uh, for analytics and AI, so you can get involved with them. So that's even after post graduation, um, you can you know get involved with speakers and the executive for that as well. So lots of things you could do. We do have a subgroup of that group called Women in Analytics. So if you want to get involved as a woman, um, you can do that and make sure that the content suits your expectations or requirements as well. Uh, again, this is a technical workshop, and as I mentioned earlier, we give you access to you know academic licenses and things. So we run workshops on Python, SQL, Tableau, SAS, Databricks, and Snowflake. Um, usually, you know, two, one, two, or three workshops for these things to get you in there and to sort of point you in the right direction of further resources and further learning as well. I know both Databricks and Snowflake, they offer uh, digital badging that you can, you know, post on your LinkedIn profile and stuff. So it's very helpful to access their content and to learn a little bit more if you want to do a deeper dive into those things. Um, and then cross-program is not just the MMAI program, right? So as a student at Smith, you have access to students in all of our different programs. We have um, a cross-program group for equity, diversity, and inclusion, which is very important. We have the Queen's University Alternate Assets Fund, which you can um, get a, a role in if you apply for it. 
And we have our Scotiabank Center for Customer Analytics, which is all about research uh, with banking and customer lifetime value and that kind of stuff. So there's those kinds of opportunities as well. Now, who is in the class with you? So right now, the current class, um, the average age is 34. Um, and that, I mean, averages, right? They're not the best uh, statistics. So what I like to do is talk about the range. So we have some people as young as 22 and some as old as 52. Uh, when you think about what each of those sort of age groups brings, right? The 22 year old comes in with tremendous technical knowledge. They've probably been studying this stuff during their university years and they've got some lots of experience. And then on the other side, the 52 year old comes with a business acumen, right? They're here to learn about the technology, but they also need to learn about the younger people who are coming in, right? What, do, uh, what are they looking for enrollments? How can I apply AI into my business? How can I be successful doing that? And so it's nice to have those sort of what I would call bookends in the classroom, right? Because you're hearing from different people's experiences and it's going to help you understand those perspectives a little bit more when you're out, you know, on your own career. Um, average work experience is eight years. Average management experience is five years. This is a business program. So, you know, I think most people in the program have expectations of leadership for the future. They want to manage teams. And so you're going to be able to hear from people who are doing that right now and some of the trials and tribulations that they've undergone going from, you know, being, you know, a frontline worker person to a manager of teams and stuff as well. And we do recruit specifically to have diversity in the classroom uh, and diversity is in terms of industry representation, educational experience, work experience, um, backgrounds, ages, genders, all that kind of stuff. We do try to bring in as much um, diversity into the classroom as possible. And as a student also, we do understand that most people are here to help their career and build on their career and become more successful. So we have a substantial career management framework as well. So as soon as you're a student, right, you get access to this. We have our own career coaches that can help you. We have a whole bunch of workshops on how to write a resume, cover letter. How do you do an interview these days? How do you do a successful job? search strategy and how do you build that stuff up and so um, what i always kind of say to uh to my students who enter the program is you know you spend the first six months of the program developing your career skills right take in as many of these workshops and stuff that you possibly can understand the process of applying for different jobs or understanding your career because even if you're very happy with your current company there's a lot of opportunities up the ladder right and so you want to be able to understand okay well how can i get from here to there and our career coaches can help you out with that as much as they can applying for new jobs and so there it's a, it's a really really important resource for you to have and of course they also have a job board so if you are thinking about different companies and different uh, roles um, they've got the huge job board it's the same job board for all of our programs so you don't have to worry about you know just the mbas have something or just mma or just mmai it's actually one job board for everybody now, getting down to the what we call the brass tacks and the MMAI admissions requirements. So this is a master's degree, so you do have to have an undergraduate degree from a recognized university. Um, when you're applying to the program and you provide us with your transcripts, uh, we do need to see the mathematics and stats courses in your transcript okay this is um, a technically and a quantitatively heavy program so it's really important that you can do math um, some people just don't like math don't like anything about mathematics um, but this program here you have to be comfortable with mathematics and solving puzzles and, and that kind of stuff that's going to be really important so we're going to be looking for examples of that in your transcript <clears throat> we want you to have a minimum of two years work experience Again, it's really important to have an understanding of what goes on in an organization, especially around AI, because AI is very transformational. It's really going to change how organizations work and how they develop their efficiencies and their business processes. So it's important to understand how an actual organization works. And that's where your two years work experience can come into play. Um, we will look at a couple of exceptional applicants without that kind of work experience, but 
Um, this program is actually quite popular. And so, you know, I think that that would be a minimum. That's a tough one to break. And so if you don't have two years work experience, just hold off. You can always apply and, uh, you know, you can, we can just move your application onto the future years. Um, and that's not a problem either, but, uh, the two years work experience is pretty important. Ultimately, we're going to need two letters of reference. They do not have to be academic references. They can be a supervisor and a coworker, um, but we will need two letters of reference. And eventually we will need official transcripts in our files from your undergraduate institution. Um, along with that, if you took your undergrad at an international or university outside of Canada, we will need a, uh, a WES assessment, a detailed WES assessment um, from you eventually, okay? So we're gonna need that on file before the program starts. Um, but to start your application, all we need is a, rev a resume and a cover letter and maybe an unofficial transcript. And once we get that information, then we can introduce you to our application advisors. Uh, you will do an interview with the program director and that was sort of um, the second last piece of admission. Once you've got your application complete, you have your interview, those comments then go to our admissions committee and the admissions committee makes the final decisions about acceptance to the program, but also scholarship as well. And then I have this uh, last line here about don't start the GMAT, talk to us first. Um, a GMAT is, uh, you know, it's a general management admissions test, and it has very little to do with the mathematics that we're looking for in this program or anything about artificial intelligence, stuff like that, too. So that's why we kind of say don't start that GMAT. I'd much rather have you practice programming in Python and SQL and understanding statistics as opposed to uh, learning the content for a GMAT. So always talk to us first and see if it's actually going to be required. It might be. If your application is relatively weak, we may say, you know, you should really do a GMAT. Um, but, uh, but always talk to us first about that. That's important. Okay, and then what happens? So you submit, you know, your transcript, an unofficial transcript, a resume, and maybe a cover letter. Um, what happens then is we'll assign you to an application advisor, okay? And then we will consider you an applicant to the program. There is no fee associated with applying. So, you know, you have nothing to lose basically by starting this process and getting connected to an application advisor. Um, they're going to guide you through the process and they're going to help you present a strong case. So if they see some weakness there on your resume or your transcript, they'll suggest some ways of overcoming that. They're going to be there to make sure that you present the strongest case to the program director before you have that interview. Okay. And then the other piece here, which is kind of important is that we do a rolling admissions, okay? So there's no cutoff dates. We don't say you have to apply by June 17th or something for the start. We just do rolling admissions. So as you come into our, we'll call it pipeline, and as you complete your application, as you go to the interview, we are making decisions on a daily basis of who gets in, who doesn't. And so it's important to get in there early because of course, um, you know, you have more time to build up your resume and make that stronger case. So I always encourage people to start your application as quickly as possible, get the connection to the advisor as quickly as possible, and then you'll get your admission as quickly as possible. Because eventually the program will be full and we'll start running a wait list and you don't want to do that. And I know from looking at the, the group that we've got coming in for September, um we're probably about 94 95 percent full right now so um if you are thinking about starting this in september 2023 i'd strongly encourage you to get your information in there very quickly and get connected with that application advisor there's definitely still time um you know you haven't missed that yet um but there's still time but it is getting tighter for sure um for that september start and i will say also that um we will be starting the next cohort in 2024. We're gonna start that in May. So we're moving up the start date to May instead of September. And uh, that's gonna help out people at the other end um, of the hiring recruitment cycle because you'll be completely finished the program um, before the summer starts. And so that's what we're finding. That there's a lot of recruitment opportunities at that time. And so you'll be well positioned to do that. So even if you don't get in here in September, 
um, there will be an opportunity, you know, less than a year after that in May of 2024. So you can talk to the application advisor about, you know, which start dates better for you as well. Okay, and now for the cohort graduating in 2024, so this is the one starting September, um, the domestic fees are $67,640. The international fees are $88,640. Those are in Canadian funds. Um, these are program fees. So these program fees include all your tuition, all your books and learning materials, your meals and accommodations for the opening and closing sessions and all the software in between. Um, you can start off by um, paying a deposit and then you split the remainder over three installment payments over the course of the year. And then as a final point, so all students are responsible for their own travel arrangements and meet those travel requirements. So basically what that means is um, wherever your home is, you have to get to the hotel or the residence where we're staying for the program. And then once you check in there, then we take over and we'll give you the room accommodation and the food and all that kind of stuff. We'll take care of all the stuff after that point. But it is you're responsible for traveling to the space and getting home again after that. Okay. All right, and just a, a you know a quick reminder and summary, right? That this is about business. This is why we're a business school offering this technology program, um, because we know that AI and analytics and stuff can provide tremendous business value to an organization. It makes decision making so much more accurate, but you have to do it right, um, and so this is where the people factor comes into play, right? The technology is gonna be there, it's not going away, but it's really important to have those power skills and to understand the business side and the people side of technology, right? You need to have a vision of how you're gonna be using this technology. You have to think about this. You have to develop a strategy for implementing this. You have to be a leader to lead people and to manage the change that the organization's going on. And this is why that, BCG uh, survey was so intriguing to me because there's such a disparity between the leadership piece and the frontline workers. And that disparity, it has to be overcome. And so they need, every organization is going to need people with your skill set after taking this program to be able to understand the technology, understand the business, and be able to figure out how they work together and how they work effectively. And then how do you change people? How do you get them onto your side for this management piece? And how do you collaborate with them and make them uh, excited about AI and this transformation that we're gonna be going through? Because ultimately um, every organization is going to have a digital culture going forward. And so it's gonna be important to embrace that culture and have people and staff and workers who are embracing it as well. Because without that support, without a strong culture, you know, everything's gonna fall apart very quickly. Okay, and this is me. So now you've got my contact information and um, and basically any kind of uh, questions or whatnot, feel free to send me an email. Uh, this QR code allows you to connect with me on LinkedIn too. I'm happy to connect there. I do share a lot of stuff and add a bit of content and you'll see what's going on with the current classes and things like that. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunity there. So please uh, reach out, connect. Okay, that's the end of the, the, the official part. I've got a couple of questions here. Um, uh, what would you, so Lawrence is asking, can you use the MMAI to pursue your PhD? So the MMAI program is course-based. It is not a research-based. There's no thesis involved in that. So what you would have to do if you did the MMAI program, you would still sort of what I would call it, take a step back and learn about things like research methodologies for, for your PhD. Um, and so there's a number, if you were, let's just talk about Smith here. So Smith does have a PhD program and an MSc program around analytics and AI. Um, and so you can take those. MMAI will give you that strong foundational piece, but there will be additional courses you need to take at the MSc level before you can do your PhD. Um, PhDs are 
um, very, very specific, right? I mean, that's one of the things, and we are a business school. We're not a computer science department or electrical engineering department. So depending on what you wanted to research and what you wanted to focus on with your PhD, um, Smith might be the perfect place or it might not be the perfect place. So that's a conversation that, you know, you and I can have um, later on because the other part of doing a PhD is really important to understand the research that's going on in the school and the individual faculty members that are doing that research. And you want to connect with them to make sure that your research interests align with their research interests. And that's the secret sauce to doing a PhD is that you're working the same. You find a supervisor, you're working together and you can push forward your, your original research. Okay. Uh, Michael asks, how many distinct courses are part of the program? Is each element of the curriculum a separate course? So yeah, we have a number of courses. Uh, you're throwing me for a loop here of the exact number. I think there's about 14, 16 different courses in the program um, in each course. So we, you know, mathematics and AI is a specific course. Um, the program itself is divided roughly into modules and you take two courses per module. Each module is about eight weeks long. And so what we try to do is give you one sort of technical course with one not so technical course. So it kind of balances things out when you're doing your studying at such a fast um, pace. Okay. And then uh, Kyle is also curious what level of computer science programming background would be considered necessary. So what you want to do um, is basically have enough knowledge, right? So that when you're asked to program something um, in a course, right? You want to be able to focus on the course content. You don't want to have to worry about figuring out how to program in Python at the same time, because that will make you extremely busy when you're trying to get those assignments done. So you've got a couple of months now before the program starts. Um, I always recommend people, you know, learn as much Python as you can and as much SQL as you can. Go out and get some data sets um, off the internet or at work if you can do it and practice, 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 right? Programming is all about practice. Um, there's a lot of resources out there, including the chat GPT can help you code things. Um, but you have to be able to have enough knowledge that you can look at the code analyze the code and figure out where it's working, where it's not working and what needs to be changed, right? So you've got to have that kind of knowledge in there. So um, the more practice you can do, you have to have some knowledge for programming, um, but the important part really is you have an ability to do the quants, right? Some people, right, math just doesn't work for them. Um, other people, they can't get enough math, right? And so it's certainly be leaning towards the people who can't get enough math. Uh, because there will be a lot of mathematics. You get into our deep learning course, our mathematics for AI course, reinforcement learning. Um, there's a lot of equations. Okay, so you got to be comfortable with that. Okay, and that's it for the questions right now. So I guess we'll come to a close. So again, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, like I said, you know, I encourage you to start your application if you want to start the program in September. It's really important that you start moving on that very quickly. Reach out to us, introduce yourself off the website, um, and we can get an application advisor giving you a call and, uh, and get that as quickly as possible. Oh, I just saw Michael just ask a quick question here. Please describe the connection to the Vector Institute. So Vector, um, for people who may or may not know what Vector is, Vector is a research organization that's funded federally from the federal government through CIFAR, the uh, Canadian Institutes for Advanced Research. They provide money to Vector and they also provide money to uh, MILA in Montreal and the acronyms escaping me in Alberta. Um, but Vector um, does provide a scholarship for our students. Um, if you know everything aligns, we've actually already missed the deadline for the Vector scholarship for this year. And we're pretty happy to say we've got like three of our students in the MMAI program are getting Vector scholarships this year. Um, but Vector also provides a whole bunch of different resources as well. They have workshops, they have career stuff, um, they run panels and discussions and things like that. So. Uh, we're very closely um, connected with the Vector Institute as well. 
Okay, and I think that's it for the question. So again, thank you very much for joining me today. Hopefully I'll see you and your application soon and um, have a great day. Bye-bye.